Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Vector Algebra. In our previous videos in this particular series, we talked about divergence, physical significance of divergence. We talked about Gauss Divergence Theorem and its physical significance. In this particular video, we will be learning about curl. We all know about curl, at least something we know, but in this video, we will be going step by step and we will be clearing all the concepts. So, you stick to the video, watch the entire video, it will be very much helpful for learning, especially for understanding the physical significance and everything about curl. So, whenever we talk about curl, uh, we always learn that there will be something rotating vectors and if there is any rotating vectors, then it has a positive curl. So, we mostly know about this and from this concept, I have taken two examples, two natural examples. One is the flow field. Say there is a kind of whirlpool here in the water stream and if you take curl at any point here, there will be a existing curl that could be positive, that could be negative. We will come to that. So, here if any whirlpool is there, if any rotation is there, then you have a curl, existing curl. Now, another example is suppose you have a conductor shaped like this. So, this is the conductor and what you have is you are flowing a current through it. You can flow a current through it like if you put it with a battery, if you connect it with a battery, then there will be a flow of charge. Once the charge flows, it creates rotating or curling magnetic field around the conductor. So, we have all read about this in our electromagnetism and the equation which, which it follows is nothing but Fleming right hand rule. So, what it says, if you have a charge flowing through it and if your thumb is pointing towards the flow of the charge, then uh, your other fingers these four fingers will be pointing the curling magnetic field. So, magnetic field is rotating around a conductor which has a flowing charge. So, in this case also you have a rotating vector field and any rotating vector field has existing curl. Okay, so this is enough about the physical examples. I have taken only two examples. You can look for another example, other examples. Now, let us go into the mathematics. Suppose I have a vector A which is defined in a Cartesian coordinate system. Again, always we talk about Cartesian coordinates because it is easier to understand. Now, this is the Cartesian system where this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis. And a vector is defined, uh, this is A which has AX as X component, AY as Y component and AZ as Z component of the vector and I, Z and K are the unit vectors along X direction, Y direction and Z direction. Now, if you want to have a curl of vector A, then what you do? You do determinant of this. We all know about this I, J, K unit vectors, then the operators dodo x, dodo y, dodo z and the components. Now, if you do the determinant, we all know how to do it, then we are getting these things. So, what we are basically getting, we are getting partial derivatives of the components of the vectors. Partial derivatives with respect to these three x, y and z axis and we have different combinations. Suppose in with the i, we have this one, dodo y of a, z uh, minus dodo z of a, y. So, if suppose if these partial derivatives are existing and they are not in equal magnitude, then you will have some component here. Similar rules follow here also. So, if those if those partial derivatives have some value and they are not equal, then it will have existing values and that will lead to a curl. That could be a positive value, that could be a negative value based on this equation. So, now let us try to understand what does this particular partial derivatives mean. For that, we go to the next slide. Suppose I have a two-dimensional plane. For the understanding, we have squeezed the three-dimensional plane 
into two dimensional plane so here a, a this is the x axis this is the y axis suppose a particular component of vector ax is only directed towards this that means ax only function of x in that case the derivative with respect to y direction will obviously be zero because ax will be having x components only and we know partial derivative of y with respect to y of a function which has only x or constants will be zero similarly if a y only has y values or it's a function of y only in that case the derivative with respect to x again partial derivative would be zero so i have given this example here so this particular direction you have existing a y but the a x is zero but the derivative with respect to x of this function a y is zero for the horizontal one the vertical component a y is zero but the derivative with respect to y is zero but uh, in a situation where this is diagonal you have uh, you, need, you need to have it as a function of x and y then for this particular function you have a non-zero dodo x and a non-zero dodo y and this is very important so there are situations where you will be getting this kind of diagonal functions or a functions of both x and y and in those cases you will be having existing partial derivatives and that actually leads to your positive or negative or non-zero curl so we have talked enough about mathematics but now let us try to understand physically uh, what exactly it means we have taken a few examples and you have also seen these examples many where uh, to understand curl so obviously this example is a curl free example so if you have like these vectors like parallel to each other and it is flowing in a particular direction for that you have a non-zero sorry you have a zero curl so this doesn't have any curl but if you have rotating vector fields like this so this is the clockwise rotating this is anti-clockwise rotating and this is partially rotating so if you look at it the upper section is moving in the right hand direction that is from left to right but the lower portion is moving from right to left so that is exactly opposite direction so somewhere it has changed the orientation and that's why in between you may get a situation like this so in a flow field in a vector field you can get all the possible situations but you have to look at if you have a rotating field suppose i look at a point around this point i have a rotating vector field so i will tell that at this particular point the vector field has a non-zero curl till now we have not talked about whether it's positive or it's negative so the conven it's not the convention that would be mathematics i'll be talking about it but you need to know a counter clockwise rotation is a positive curl so this is a counter clockwise rotation so this is leading to a positive curl and this is a clockwise rotation it is leading to a negative curl we'll talk more about it now suppose you have a situation where a particular vector field is given by this so those are the vector vectors in a cartesian coordinate frame so this is the x axis this is the y axis we are again restricting us in a 2d frame but the vector field is like this so how exactly the vector field is varying the vector field is varying with uh, as a function of x it is actually varying a square proportional to the square of x and that is why the magnet you can see the directions are same all are pointing in the y directions but the magnitudes are becoming proportional to x square and this is a parabolic equation so for this particular vector field simply we'll go to mathematics we'll not think about physical significance at this point but what you do is you just uh, this is in y directional that's why this x square is the y component i guess you understand because you have to see which direction the vector is pointing along this direction 
you need to put the component so this is a y direction and we have a component x square because y is equal to x square now if we take uh, if we take the determinant value as uh, as you can see from this particular formula if you just pause the video and do this determinant you will see that this component will be existing and it will come as k into 2x so you are having a vector field in the x y plane but that is giving you a curl in the in the play in the, in the in the direction that is in the z direction that is the unit vector k so this is pointing either outward or pointing inward this is penetrating the plane of the desktop so we have so one more thing we understand from here that is a curl always gives a a, a curl is a vector and it has a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of the existing vector field so we'll talk again about it but for this case we are not seeing any kind of rotational field but we have a existing curl so always you don't feel the uh, you don't uh, you don't uh, take it in your mind like for an existing curl it should always have this kind of figure i'm talking about the vector field how you draw the vector field in a space so there could be a situation like this also now we go for more examples suppose this one say for this one where we have taken this figure from wikipedia and this is nicely explained in wikipedia suppose we have a vector field say y i cap minus x j cap in the x y plane so the vector field looks like this and the angle between the vector and the x axis is given by tan inverse this component by this component so we all know about this from our preliminary trigonometry so if you can just pause the video and just think about it how to calculate the angle and you can calculate it so here it is minus x by y because those are the components i have taken now suppose you think about a particular point say 2 comma 2 somewhere here so at this point this x will be minus 2 and it will be 2 x is plus 2 so it will be 2 by 2 so tan inverse of minus 1 so tan inverse of minus 1 means 40 minus 45 degree so it is making an angle minus 45 degree with respect to the x axis so similarly if you i mean if you just pause the video and calculate all the angles at every point you will see like the vector is rotating like this if you don't understand pause the video and just try to calculate those angles and see the vector field will be uh, looking like this rotating vector fields and this is going in the clockwise direction you see now if you calculate the di uh, not divergence curl of this vector field you'll be getting minus 2k you can again pause the video and try to calculate the curl of this one with the initial formula and you will get minus 2k so the curl is pointing again i told like if the vector is in the xy plane your curl will be in the perpendicular plane that is in the z direction and that is why this is being shown in three dimensional this is shown in a two dimensional plane but this is shown in three dimensional because at every point it will be either pointing towards me or it will be penetrating the desktop and so we need a three dimensional plane to to understand this curl and here it is pointing in a negative uh, y direction that is why you can see in the negative direction and this is constant see the length of each arrow is same because if the magnitude is always 2 and it is pointing in the minus y direction so another example here you see uh, the same example i have also taken uh, there so this is minus x square so in this case if you uh, calculate the angle it will because it, it doesn't have any x component so y by 0 y by x tan inverse of y by x it is becoming tan inverse of something by 0 so tan inverse of minus infinity giving you minus 90 degree so it is 90 degree the angle with the x axis and that is why the vectors are like this 
and the magnitude varies with respect to x square so as x is becoming zero the magnitude is also becoming zero as we move in both the direction the magnitude is increasing because the square is always positive and uh, that is why we have a direction like this we have a actually flow field not flow field vector field like this now if i take a curl of this it is becoming minus 2xk so again this curl now is not a constant it is varying uh, with x and that is why if you see I have already talked about about the direction I mean this is in xy plane this is in z plane uh, why does it happen I have talked about it so I'm not going into that details but I'm going into the details if you look at the arrows the arrows are not of equal length because it varies with x again when x is 0 the length of the arrow should be 0 when you are moving in in a direction say in the positive direction so it, if x is positive so this entire thing will be negative and that is why it is pointing downwards but now if x is negative so this multiplication will be positive so it will be pointing in the other direction so just mind it those two things are not in the similar direction the curl of the this vector field so one is pointing upwards other part is pointing downwards and this is because of this formula so up to this point uh, what we have understood we have understood that any rotating vector field has a existing curl and i have talked about it if this is clockwise from the mathematics we have seen like the vector points in the negative direction so we call it a negative curl for the clockwise for counterclockwise it happens opposite and we call it a positive curl so again I'm recapitulating the first thing we learnt is about the rotating field existing curl we learnt about non-rotating non fields like this can also have an existing curl we learnt about the direction of curl and also we learnt about little bit mathematics about curl and all as a whole I guess this video will be helpful and that has made your concept of curl more I mean clear and we'll be looking forward to making more videos on it to as a follow-up video so that uh, we can get we can get, get your queries and we can solve that so today i'm stopping here i request you to subscribe to my channel because we are having more uh, having more videos coming and uh, please support us thank you